What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. Today we're going to be looking at Phrygian Mode, or THE Phrygian Mode, which is the third mode based off your major scale. And there's a couple of things that you should be familiar with or comfortable with to really understand what's going on and to fully explore how to use modes. Um, a couple of things being scale degrees, knowing the difference between a major third, minor third, major six, minor six, and knowing what I mean when I say those. And you should also be familiar with a chord scale. If you're not familiar with those two things, when you download the transcription for this site, which the link is down below, there's also a reference page on my site, which should have this information uploaded as well that you can download and check out, just to kind of familiarize yourself with some of the terminology if you're not familiar with it. So, we're playing D Phrygian. Now all modes are based off of your major scale. And it's a some variation of sort of your major scale. So, by the way, I'm in drop D for this lesson, because as you'll see, it's a great way to play your low chord and then let that ring out under or over everything you're playing to really explore the sound of the mode. It's really nice. So we're, I'm in a drop D tuning. Right? playing my Evertune VGS guitar. I'm going into the Line 6 HD Pro, and in front of that I'm using the Dead Horse Overdrive from Proton Pedals, just for a tiny smidge bit of grime over the clean sound. Dirty it up just a little, it sounds really nice. So, as I was saying, all the modes are in relation to your major scale. So if you know what your major scale is, right? If I just change, some of those notes I get my Phrygian mode or any other mode that you want to experiment with but we focus a lot on rock and metal here and for this style Phrygian mode is an absolute must and it's used all the time so if you're comfortable with your minor scale it's actually only changing one note so we have our major scale right which all the intervals in our major scale are major except our fourth and our fifth, which are perfect. You can't change those, because they turn into something else if you do. So we have major second, major third, fourth, fifth, major sixth, major seven, and back to our octave, which is our perfect eight. So if we change our major six and major seven, and just drop those down, that becomes a minor 6 and a minor 7. And if we continue down the scale, everything's going to stay the same except the second note of the scale. And the second note of the scale now is going to be a half step above the root. It creates a real exotic flavor, a real ambient flavor if you want to explore it that way. Really great, to, really great scale. Sounds, sounds really good. Again, Phrygian is one of our minor modes. If you're familiar with your chord scale, you'll know that you'll have three major chords and three minor chords, and then your one diminished. And you have a mode for each one of those. So, Phrygian is a minor based mode, and it has a minor second or a half step from the root. So what we're going to do to explore this is we're going to let our D string ring out and then we're just going to play real simple triads going up the chord scale. So we're going to have D minor, only two different shapes. You have D minor, typical D minor shape. So we have two, three, and one with our D underneath that. And then we're going to move up to third position and that's going to be your major shape. You can think of it as a little D chord if you're familiar with that, just up a half step. So your chord is from the high string. 3, 4, 3, and then our open D string. Because again, we're in D Phrygian, so we want the D to be kind of underneath all of these chords. And we move that up to 5th position, and you get another major chord, 5, 6, 5. Move that up to 6th position, you get a minor chord, 7, 8, 6. Move that up to 8th position, you have a diminished chord which is actually 8, 10, 8. Move that up to 10th position, you have a major shape. 
10, 11, 10. Move that up to 11th position. You have a minor shape, 12, 13, 11. And then you move that up a whole step. And you're back to D minor. So those are all the chords that you can explore as you bring out the D to kind of come up with some interesting ideas. And what I like to do is I like to, once you're comfortable with those shapes, you can obviously learn your other inversions so you can stay in one position and hit a good different couple chords, but we're not going to do that in this particular lesson. But what I like to do is I like to mix and match. So if I'm playing this E flat chord in third position, I know that my scale tones based on my other chords that I was playing are right, three, five, six. So I can add those to my chord so I can make other take this chord up a step in the fifth position, maybe take a step back and grab the G on the high string. So essentially I'm just mixing and matching the voicings, the chord tones from each voicing and combining and making essentially new little chords if I wanted to think about it in that way. is a real great way to come up with a lot of different ideas. So that is one way we're going to explore our Phrygian mode. And again, all the roots of those chords are on our second string. So it's 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 13, and then 15 is our root. fun mode to explore. So that's one way we're going to look at it. The second way we're going to look at it is we're just going to look at our low strings. Simple power chords. If you're comfortable with your minor scale and familiar with it, you know that it's 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. And you have your pentatonic scale is in there as well. You just take out the 6th fret and the 2nd fret. I'm sorry, the 8th fret and the 2nd fret. So to make the change to Phrygian, all we have to do is go move the second fret down to the first fret. So now we have Phrygian. We have that half step above the root. So now if we just play power chords, right? very simple to play, and then we can turn all those into major and minor chords. That's a really nice way to come up with some cool chord progressions. You can make really nice chorus riffs out of those kind of chords. And if you're unfamiliar with those, essentially you're taking a power chord and changing the D string. So we have a minor chord shape, which would be 5-5, five, five, this particular one, 5-5-8. Five, five, and that's a minor chord shape, right? It spans four frets. And if I move my pinky up one, I get a major chord. So the same, we just follow the chord scale that we did before. We know it's minor. And then two majors, then we have a minor chord, G minor, then we have this diminished chord, you can play that a couple different ways, you can go 7, 6, 10, or 7, 6, 7, sounds really good, we have our B flat, we have our C minor on 10, and we have our D minor on 12 again. So now we have all of those chords. On our low string. And you can come up with some really cool riffs that way. Switch on a heavier sound here. So now, if we know our D here on our A string, with a lot of cool riffs and there are a lot of good riffs out there so I put one together to show you and this is how it goes Really 
fun riff to play. You can come up with a lot of these style riffs. And this riff is tabbed out. All I'm doing is walking up on my low string, which is D, 035. And then I'm sliding up to the root on the A string. Stepping up a half step to six. And then doing a little hammer on pull off, a little trill. Down the three, and three five. And then just some mixture of power chords, some variation on each phrase to give it something different. Or any variation of that. And then I repeat the riff. And I slide up to five and I stay there and I play the minor chord. Move it up to eight. And down the three. And that's my variation in the riff. I always like to add variation to my riff. So I always do one phrase one way and then I'll repeat the riff and then I'll put a second phrase on it and I usually have something like that. So it's like A, B, A, B and maybe that fourth time is something completely different just to add more variation or help segue into another riff. So anyway, you can get all these ideas. They're transcribed on my website. The link is down below. Take some time with the modes. Really explore the sound and characteristics of each mode. I'll probably do some other modal lessons but I wanted to start with this one because as I said, it's very common in metal and hard rock, seen all the time. Plus, it sounds really good. So, as always, let me know what you come up with. And until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.